Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. So the day in this video, we're going to be making a sharpening jig. So I've wanted to buy one of these for ages, but they all seem really high priced and pretty much crappily made, to be honest, you know. So the whole point of making something is to make it better. So in my eyes, you know, rather than buying it, we can make something that's better. And then making your own tools is so much more satisfying than buying something and using it. So I'll show you what I've got and we'll get to it. So everything here are fun. Um, part of the diamond stones, I bought them, but I only paid uh, £30 for them, I think they were. And I've got them for 120 or up to 3000 So they should be sufficient, you know, to sharpen. And I want to obviously make it to sharpen knives, but I also want to keep in mind to sharpen joint art and planer blades. I've got these things here. And again, I've fun everything, apart from the brass, bought, bought, bought the brass. So, this is what we'll use to actually get our angle, but we'll need to make a bushing to go in there. And then I've got uh, just a threaded rod here. Oh, end it's threaded anyway. And we'll only need like half of this. So, we'll get a bushing so that, that and then drill a hole. For that and then I've got this bit here with it so we'll use that to mount it to uh, our bottom plate um, but this is sort of what I've came up with and it might change so got our eye and um, rod goes through there and I sort of came up with this so obviously this is to this will be to hold these in place and I sort of just came up with a kind of wee piece like that where we can obviously tighten that down and that'll force that and it'll hold that tightly but I'm not quite sure about this, I, I might change it I did have in mind to use a big length of steel but I don't know if that's uh, I feel like I'm, I'm wasting metal by doing that maybe just use a bit of wood but we'll just focus on this tap part of the new. Um, by the time I've made all this tap part, these bits, um, I've made my decision as to whether I'm going to use wood or steel. So I'm going to start off sorting this bit here to the lathe. Right, so we'll just take it off, flip it, and do this bit here as well. But then we can press fit on. It's there, eight point five, because we can always shorten or like sand it or file it just to get it the perfect size. See, I'm not quite sure how long we need this um, and then how high this bit's going to be but we can we can sort that when we get to it um, so chop it and just leave it a bit long because at least if we if it's too long then we can just shorten it but we can't add any length to it so just gotta chop it a bit here now. Put it in the leaf. Sure. 
should be enough. Oh, aye, perfect, man. Well, we want to make our two wee, um, two wee clamps. To hold it right here, like basically just bits here with a wee V cut into it, um, wee V cut into it, and then we can have a screw or a bolt at the top, and we can bolt that down on it so it holds it tight. Aye. So I've got to use this uh, bit of square stock brass, and we'll cut about 15 mil off it, draw a hole through the centre, and then a hole in the tap with threads, and then we'll file, we'll file a wee bit. For that to just sit in there nicely. Clean it up a wee bit first. Might need to. I put that in there, and it's just sort of the hole's just sort of above center a wee bit, which that is perfect. Just above centre, and then a wee slip of one here. Drill a hole. Well, probably easier to drill the hole than now. Uh, I probably. So I'm just going to mark off just right in the centre here. Uh, and then we'll drill for uh, N3, I think. Sweet. Right, let's cut it in half. I could just cut it with a hacksaw, but let's use the bandsaw. This bandsaw, it is a woodworking bandsaw, but it has got two speeds. Get a wee lever here. Bring this down, show you. And if we open this bit here, it's got a wee pulley here. And room for another one, so it's on the bigger pulley than now. Then there's a smaller pulley there, which just slows the band sort of right away down. So I turn this, and then I just move this out of here. So let's get that fairly tight, make sure it's running nicely, which it is. running pretty slow a lot lot slower than what it usually runs now that blade that i have got on it it's just a woodworking blade but the way i always see it is that all these blades the blades i buy are a they're a carbon steel blade, so I can imagine if I was to buy, you know, a blade that was designed for uh, cutting metal, it would probably just be a bit thicker that way. Um, but I, I'm not, maybe I need to test that and get a metal one. But uh, so let's use the belt sand on. Sweet, perfect. We want to file a wee V groove in, but the V groove has to be precise, you know what I mean? 
has to be just under the hole. Aye. Or no, even just under the hole. I guess we want it to be, you know, up. Rather than it being just below the hole, we have it so it's just a wee bit under like the hole and that will make it that when it does, when we clamp them together, it will push this up just under, we're an hour, we're an hour millimetre away from it. Right, so, file work now. Continue away at it. It's a tedious process, but be worth it in the end. Put them both to. They're looking all right, um, but what I want to do is these bits here. I want to sort of take them back a wee bit and just round them there, because I don't want them to be poking. Like if we look, you know, we sort of see it. They're hitting them, so. I want that to sit at the back without getting hit by this bit, so I'm just going around these bits there. There we go, they're perfect the way they are. I'll just a wee bit there like that. Right, perfect, man. Right, so all I do now is just sort of dress them a bit, you know, just take that blockiness away from them. So I think I'm going to round these bits that are here, just sort of round these bits there a bit. Parts finished and they came out looking pretty cool, man. Pretty sweet. Look. I think I'll give them a wee, you know, hand uh, polish, hand sand to finish them off. Look. And also, I'm thinking like with the actual rod itself. See, I've created a taper where it comes in sticks, but I think it's important for this to to be able to run in and out like that when you're doing it. So I think that I will just put this back on the lathe and take this down a lot further. But let's get on and see if it fits. So it's got me in there. Get that in there. Right. So there we go. Right, so that's not in there tight. Hmm. Maybe I do want to have a spring here. <clears throat> I could have it like a solid bit here with a spring just pushing down on it tight. Right. Made this wee bit here with a wee spring. And we'll put this right here. And then we'll take that down just a wee bit. Right. That should solve a problem. There we go. There we go, that's solid in there. Sweet. So, we've got that bit sorted. We can start thinking about the base, but I'm all going to, as I say, I'm going to just thin this out a bit more. Just doing it a bit here. Because I want, I just want that to be able to, you know, when you're actually doing it, I want that to be able to slide and no jam up there, you know, like that. Everything ready, I've polished this down, put a nice taper on this so that it actually works the way it's meant to work. 
Um, all these bits are ready. That's good. We still need to make our honel, but um, and then obviously the base, which I've got a good idea how I'm going to do the base. Before we can begin to even make this bottom bit, I need a way to, you know, clamp this bit down. So we'll just make a rainbow. That is an M16 by 2 and checked with my die. So we can just take this down to 15.8 and we can leave a nice shoulder on it. And then we'll get the threads cut. That man, <laughs> but uh, they seem to be forming all right. I just need to get a couple of wee flat spots in this side here, look. then I'll just do it on the vise. See really what I should have done, think about it now, I should have screwed that one down to squeeze the die open. Oh I think of that now when I've done it. <laughs> 15 minutes of struggling now. Oh, not quite 15 but... Oh, right there, make a wee undercut and then we'll part it off and get it in the mill and then we'll We'll cut for a hex bolt. Oh, nice. There we go, but there it is. And that came out a gorgeous looking part, man. I think. I think. <laughs> well, let, let's judge the overall project when it's done, but that's a thing of beauty, man, to me. <laughs> this big bit of hardwood here. And I'm going to use this rather than a bit of metal. So we're just going to get this chopped up, laid it on my marks, oh, we'll use the table saw. Right, so we've got our bits, um, right, that, that bit goes there, that's where our, our knives, well actually this is the, uh, 
This is the back with that hole in it. Knife. Um, <clears throat> this bit here, we shall glue that there so that I can clamp it in the vise. And then I've got these three bits here. I'm going to glue together and I'm going to sort of make a wee like sort of upside down pot. Draw a hole. Quickly plane these and get them glued up. I'm going to here and then right there with a 16 mil spade bit. That went through pretty nice. Should be able to cut them out, no problem with a jigsaw. There we go, that should do us. Nice. See, I was just sitting thinking about that there. Uh, I struggled man to cut all these threads in it when I really only needed the tap bit of thread, so Eh, it's fine. Right, so this bit here we want to cut this bit so that we can insert that into it. And again it's just to get more your footprint on this. There we go. Dale's done, that came out pretty sweet man, hold that wee gap in, we'll get this epoxied in place, going to glue these two bits here because that's going in the vise so it'll stick up so we'll have a wee bit there to support it and um, glue this bit here but I'm going to chamfer around this get some nice nice big chamfers around this bit and uh, we're going to glue a wee strip a wood here like that they two and about there uh, and then I've got this bit of aluminium here, I need to cut that bit off. That will go there, and we'll tighten it down. And with a bit of wood here, it will pivot it, blade here, um, and that will squeeze it and hold it on tight. Bit of leather here, leather there to protect the blade. And that'll be us, basically finished. So, so I chamfered these sides, and then I just put a round over on this bit here where the blade's gonna sit. Why get everything glued up now? Made that wee bit there, or there. And just put a couple of wee chamfers on these bits, just pretty them up.
So the last thing really to do is just to cut this, so we'll do that. So next thing to make is a handle and we'll make a nice wee ferrule for it which is one of these Right, I don't need this to be this that big. Um, maybe just chop about a third of it off. Yeah. I like seven. Turned out pretty sweet looking. Last thing that I want to do before I put it together is uh, I, I, sh I should have done it before I put this on, but I want to thin this bit out here so it's like a ramp. So I've got a nice flat transition. And I changed these bits here rather than just one big strip. I put two bits because my idea is that I could probably. Sharp chisels and that as well that could do, I think, but I'm not sure. Nice. Right. Right, that's his goat. All the parts, everything ready. Take that right away down. Try to get it nice and smooth, but cut a wee dodgy bits, but that's the way I want it. So I'm going to soak everything in boiled linseed oil. Right, just leave it, let it soak it on. Right, so let's get it together. We'll probably need to move it a bit just to get the perfect angle. That flows nicely down. Spring right there and then just push it up and then maybe. There we go. Tighten this down. That's always the case when you when you make here. Nice, right. So, I want to sharpen the knife that I made because when I made this, I didn't necessarily make it sharp. Each side has got one big massive bevel on it. As you can see like this. So let's let's sharpen this. I mean, it's it's not. I'm just going to go through the grits. Um, two forty, then probably like 800, 1600, so forth, till we. Get to the point where I'm polishing it, you know, so. Um, I 
Oh, there we go. Hmm. I think we want to go back a bit. We could take it back or we could take that down. So let's just, to begin with, let's just take this down. All right, let's, let's get a bash right there. I'll get like five strokes or 10 and then I'll flip it in five strokes again, just so we're keeping it even, you know? Um, three. One, two, one. You know, the edge, the point. Let's get a wee strop. I feel it is sharp, but there's maybe a couple of wee spots on it that's no as sharp as the other bits. Um, but I certainly wouldn't want to run my finger down it that way, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so I've done what I needed to do, and it's no, it's no damage to the knife, you know, holding it in its place. So, hey man, works pretty good. So, obviously, I'll need to do a bit of experimenting with it, you know, just try to find that right angle. Need to experiment with it, just to find that perfect angle, man, right? There you go. Hey guys, so thanks for watching there. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed making that, man. I really, really enjoyed uh, making it. I enjoy stuff like that, man, you know, just the problem-solving aspect. And uh, it was a really fun project. And most importantly, but it's a, it's a functional tool jig that I'm actually going to use. Uh, it's definitely room for improvement. Um, just learn to use it, find the right angle. See, this is sharp, but... I definitely know it can it can be sharper. Um and it, it looks cool, you know. A lot of times when you make jigs and that they don't really look, you know, kinda cool. They're just functional, they've got their, you know, use, but it definitely looks cool, man. Look. Um so obviously the idea when I was doing it but is you know, so I can sharpen longer things, but I don't know if that's gonna be possible. Because there's just a lot of flex out here with these wee things. If, if anything, I would probably, you know, change these diamond stones. You know, get a, you know, we set of water stones or something. I'll, I'll need to check that out. But overall, you know, it wouldn't be dear to make something like this. You know, I checked up the price of these wee uh, eyelets for the actual uh, 8 mil, uh rod. And they're only a couple of pound. I think it was half either ebay or amazon you know so a couple of pound there cut a pound in your rods cut a pound for the brass bits cut a pound for the wood you know probably make this for about 30 pound easy no including the stones mind you but really when you buy one of these they're like minimum a hundred pound for for one it's actually worth its salt anyway um so they are kind of expensive. The better ones are really, really, really expensive. And I find that this one is solid. And I just need to nail that angle properly. Uh, and then just actually practice using it. How many, you know, strokes in that. Um, but aye, room, room for improvement, definitely. But it's a functional jig, man, you know. Um, and... This was cheap, this cost me nothing basically because it's, it's all, these were all just bits that I had lying about. So, aye man. So I hope that you enjoyed watching it. I'll let you get going and I'll see you in the next project, alright? Take it easy. God bless guys. And build something. Build something guys. See you later.